What are we in the golden age of right now? Getting famous for stupid beep reasons. Didn't Andy Warhol once say in the future everyone will be famous for 20 seconds? 15 minutes. Imagine 15 minute TikToks. Don't. Board games. If you look at lists of the best board games of all time, 95% of them will have been released in the last 20 years. It's incredible. Yep. Board game designers are really pushing that they can fit in a box with games frequently costing well over $100. Plus in the last couple of years legacy games started showing up. They tell a story and change over plays. It's getting really wild. Turns out you can fit a lot into a game when you don't assume you are selling to children without money. Misinformation. Recent studies show that you are incorrect and you shouldn't verify this statement. Recent studies have shown that recent studies are wrong. The ones responsible for those recent studies have been sacked. We now have new people with newer, better studies. Those studies prove me correct about all things. Six-fifths people that prove previous recent studies wrong have also been shown to be excellent judges of fractions and statistics. Convenience. Want food but don't want to move. Delivery. Want to meet up but don't want to leave the house? Call your friends for a convo. Want to entertain yourself at home? We have movies, video games, books, etc. Nah, it's definitely gone to get much better in the future. This ain't the golden age yet by far. Not if society breaks down as a result of climate change and our descendants are living in what's left of the Arctic Circle. As the old saying goes, born too late to explore the Earth, born too early to explore the galaxy, born just in time to browse memes. All jokes aside I think current day meme culture is something that, despite its negatives is pretty unique and will be looked back open many years from now. I do wonder if future generations will be still interested in memes or if memes will become this generation's dad jokes outdated humor. I reckon they will exist but in a different form. Even now the concept of a meme has changed. A lot of what people now call memes were image macros 10 to 15 years ago and even they have evolved. Depending on your definition of meme is memes have always and will always exist. If you use the definition coined by evolutionary biologist Richard Dawkins when he created the word, it means unit of cultural information spread by imitation. Memes are more than the pictures we see on social media. They can be the traditions your culture, family carry, the recipes we share, etc. Yeah, the my go-to example of a non-digital meme is that pointy s that every single kid drew at school. Podcasts Serialized fiction, true crime, horror, pop culture, news, critiques, and everything else under the sun. If there's an interest there are probably at least a half dozen podcasts covering it. I actually think we're just getting started here. Podcasts are going to be, be bigger than books. And GT, and free. Not for long. With the way Spotify is signing huge podcasts to exclusivity agreements I feel like it's only a matter of time until they're a near on-demand version of SiriusXM. We are out of it but the internet before it had become monetized like it is today, like when YouTube had no ads, streamers, or anything like that and was just ridiculous random beep videos that could be browsed with no BS, recommendations amazing times that will never be seen again or known by any other generation. I remember it well. It was amazing. I used to visit an internet cafe in the mid-90s and just spend hours surfing the web. There were no giants like Facebook or Google or Amazon, just a million little sites, all made by some kid who checked a HTML book out of the local library, and all packed with passion for whatever their subject was. I know it was an incredible time, now it all seems to get boiled down to the exact same couple formulas that people think will get viewers or allow them to make money. It's all boiled down to the same formulas, because those are the ones that asterisk do asterisk get viewers and attract money. Give people enough time and they'll optimize anything for making money. Instant gratification. People wondering why things don't bring them pleasure anymore. It's because they are addicted to and numbed by constant gratification and they don't realize it. Edit to add this about someone's version of a dopamine detox edit number 2 for the people who are getting pissed that think I mean the odd Silicon Valley practice of isolating yourself in a dark room and doing nothing like a monk, or the people who think I'm peddling asterisk 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 taking breaks from social and video games and scheduled intervals makes me feel good. 
I am not claiming it is irrefutable miracle. It's something that changed my life. Sorry if you don't like it. And GT, I am not claiming it is irrefutable science or a miracle. While the science is still new, the data is actually behind you. Higher social media usage highly correlates with sadness, anxiety, loneliness, and depression. This is especially true for younger people. Social media is not social interaction. I've also taken to limiting my social media greatly and it's helped my mental well-being a ton. The most valuable resource you have in life is time. Why spend it sifting through mindless musings by people with Dunning-Kruger effect postings? Beer. There has been such a boom in the past decade, or at least I know here in the US, with so many craft breweries popping up and cool experimentation going on. I came here to discuss this. I think we were in the golden age of beer for about 10 to 15 years until about 3 years ago. Now it's every brewery and their dog making 8 different IPAs and the diversity in beer has decreased because of the IPA craze. I get it, pump out IPAs that rush off the shelf instead of ESBs, hoppy wheats, Belgian wheats, or others, but it's sad for me to go to the local grocery store or Binnie's and not see much more than IPAs. Three years ago trips to Binnie's was like going to the candy store or Disney. I'll grant that we're really heavy in IPAs right now, but I'm fine with it if it means that good breweries make the money they need to keep churning out good beer. I'll admit though that I live in an area where I can go to the breweries themselves and have the various beers and buy directly from them. I imagine it's a different story when you can only buy what the grocery stores or liquor stores keep in stock. Tabletop RPGs Kinda crazy to think about how D&D was basically just shorthand for nerd in popular culture only a short while ago. Now it's still considered nerdy, but quickly becoming more and more popular outside of traditional geek stereotypes. My friends and I just started a campaign for something to do during COVID and absolutely love it. None of us have played before or look like the type that would normally. One of us. One of us. I'm glad you discovered Dian Amp. Dian is having fun. I've been DMing for years and can't wait until this pandemic ends and we can follow on with our campaign. But as I was saying, I believe this might be the golden age for all TRPGs. New editions of DNAMP, D, Pathfinder, Call of Cthulhu, Cyberpunk, the rise of gaming streams, the popularization and demystification of the hobby. There's even a new DNAMP, D animated series for adults coming to Amazon Prime next year. Dude I love DNAMP, D with friends. I do not like it when I play with actual geeks who sit at the table and go, well actually, according to rule 35 on page 965 section A, 24, you cannot do that because take away food. 10 years ago you could choose between a crappy curry, a terrible pizza or laughable Chinese food and you probably had to go and pick it up for yourself. This in a second tier English city rather than way out in the sticks. Now I can get literally hundreds of different things delivered to my door, and some of it is actually good to eat. A golden age indeed. Free oxygen. Enjoy it while it's still free. The Lorax was prophecy. Incredibly ignorant vocal people. There have always been village idiots, now the village idiots have internet access and a means of sharing their stupid on a large scale. We are in the golden age of unfiltered misinformation. And these idiots can now find the idiots from other villages, and collaborate on their idiotic ideas online, thus forming idiot villages insulated from scrutiny and shamming. TV shows. Breaking Bad and Chernobyl are number one and two in IMDb I think. This needs to be higher. The amount and quality of television being generated these days is mind-boggling. There are more options for distribution and this has led to major studios beefing up their content, calendars. Don't get me wrong, there's also a lot of crud to sift through to find real gems but these days, there are so many high quality, poignant shows that make good use of the serial format to provide depth to storytelling. It's kind of amazing. Golden Ages Just look at this list. Narcissism. I assume you're referring to me. You're so vain, you probably think this comment is about you. Probably being able to earn from non-conventional ways. Fine arts skill didn't mean be but now you can start an Insta page, YT channel etc. If you like fashion you can start a blog. Matt Stoney makes millions from eating food, which might just have been a party trick in 90s. Big fan of cinema. Just start a review, recommendation page. 
You can pretty much earn money from anything that you do good if you are smart in pro- <laughs>